in studio with me right now, Justice of the Peace for Precinct 2. It's Susan Rowley. Welcome back. How are you? Thank you, Chad. I'm great. Happy Valentine's Day. And, and to you as well. I, to the listeners, Chad is not wearing red. I'm not. No. He's not. I'm wearing red. Jody is wearing Jody's red. Jody's wearing red. I don't think Jody planned that, though. Yeah, okay. Yes, he did. He, he did said not. he did. <laughs> He's a liar. He didn't plan that. It says Wednesday or Thursday uh, shirt. That's what that is. <laughs> Uh, you made, uh, you made quite a bit of news, uh, this week, uh, earlier in the week, uh, with a, a story about, uh, backlogged cases, uh, tell, I guess set, set all this, uh, set all this up. Uh, when you were, I guess, sworn in, mm-hmm. uh, is that when you kind of started this process of looking back and seeing what the caseload was and, and kind of where we, we stood as far as some of these cases go when, what kind of led you to the. Oh, my goodness, 19,000 cases just for, what, JP2 alone, right? That's just for the criminal side. Yeah. So, and then there's 7,000 for the civil. But what got me started was I got sworn in on January 1st and then started January 2nd, and I thought, I need to figure out what the backlog is because usually there is a backlog when a new judge takes over. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I asked the uh, administrative courts to see if they could run a spreadsheet for me knowing that it would be pretty big. But when I got the numbers that there was 19,211 open criminal slash ticket cases and 6,965 open civil cases, I was amazed. My Literally my jaw dropped. I was going, oh my God, because I printed out the spreadsheet and it was over 500 pages long. Mm. Um. And, and now is this just for JP2 or just, is this just for JP2? How does this compare? Do you know with some of the other precincts? Well, the precincts now all I talked to the judges, they're all up to date. They don't have what's called a backlog. Um, so these, just your court has this, you know, what, 20, what, 26,000. Yeah. And now judge Carruth, when she took over JP four, four years ago, she had a backlog that was similar to this. Um, and she, it took her a while to figure out with the DA's office a plan of action to try and get rid of, because you really have to get rid of a lot of these cases. There's, there's no feasible way to, to go after that many cases. You'd have to have the man hours would be incredible. I'd have to have the, a, a huge staff to do it, and most of them are barred by the statute of limitations, anyways. Mm. So. There is a plan of action already there, so I'm already plan. I've already had meetings with the DA's office to talk about getting rid of probably close to fifteen thousand. Okay, so out of the twenty six thousand uh, backlogged cases that are that that you that that you know you kind of walked into, mm-hmm. uh, what's the 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 uh, I guess how far back do these cases go? Well, there are some that date back even into the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Not very many, very few. A lot of those are bad checks, and those stay open for a while because we always want to have people pay off their hot checks. Right. But the majority of the tickets and criminal cases, they range from like 99 until all the way up to 2018. But the majority of the, I mean, the 17, 18s, I don't consider that a backlog. Because that I can I can go in and I can handle those right. So there's a a little there's a small portion. They're only talking about maybe five hundred or so that are manageable that are still within the last two years that I can go after. But all the rest, that's a so, backlog. So uh, how did this happen? Be brutally honest. How did this happen? <sighs> Things not getting set on dockets, things, um, letters not going out to people, um, warrants not being served or actually I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of warrants on tickets because then it just puts people in jail for a ticket, which then they're, then they're, we're paying $60 a day to, to house them for money. Right. I'm, I'm actually more of a fan of collection agencies and an omni base flagging so that um what that is is they flag the the dps and then they can't get their license renewed right that's usually a big motivator to get them to come in and take care of their tickets yeah 
So um, that's mostly what it is. What you're what a what you're supposed to do is when the DPS or whatever agency, Parks and Wildlife or whatever, brings in the tickets, you set them on a docket, and then those people that got the tickets get notice to come in. Hey, you haven't paid it, so come on in and negotiate this with us, and and let's talk about it. So it, w- was this a, a police issue or was this, you know, predecessor issue? I know you don't – you mentioned in a, a past interview that you didn't want to, you know, slam your predecessor. But, you uh, know, he's... for those who are looking and, – and I've gotten a lot of a lot of people asking, how does this happen? You know, who's – is this, you know, an LPD issue? Is this county commissioner issue? Is this – No, and I've had a lot of people say, oh, my God, the county commissioners – it is not the county commissioner's job to oversee the judges. So the county commissioners have nothing to do with it. Right. So of all the Facebook things that I've gotten, oh, my God, the county commissioners – no, you, you really can't blame the county commissioners on this. Yeah. And it's really – especially in the JP courts – the judges kind of run their own courts, but I mean, I'm not going to say anything bad about my predecessor. He had a lot of things, a lot of personal issues going on in his life near the end of his term. And, and he was a, he was a great man, a great judge. So, um, I'm going to leave it at that. All for right. That. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's take the break. When we come back, uh, we'll uh, continue our conversation with, uh, the justice of the peace precinct Two, Susan Rowley. Thank you. Chad Easty Show News Talk, 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO, Justice of the Peace Precinct 2, Susan Rowley in studio talking about the uh, backlogged cases, a story that came out earlier this week, 26,000 total. That's correct. Uh, cases, uh, civil and criminal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the criminal includes the tickets. Okay. So when... Uh, Part of this, uh, part of the reason this story came out is that, uh, and, and you've expressed concern about this, is that there are some people who are caught up in this who maybe have a ticket from, uh, let's say, the year 2000 or mm-hmm. 2002. Correct. They have a warrant out for their arrest, but statute of limitations has run out on this? That's correct. What happens is the system is you're supposed to, after a ticket is done or any any criminal action is done, some kind of charging instrument in with the with these types it's called a complaint and a complaint is the officer in and of the state of texas does charge such and such with such and such and they sign off on it okay when the complaint is filed that stops the two-year statute of limitations but this court never did complaints and most of those old tickets didn't have complaints on them Mm. even the new ones only the dps ones because they have them on the ticket now so statute limitations has run on them but there were active warrants that were put on them before the statute limitations ran so a police officer when they stop you they're not going to know what the warrants that the warrants not a a legitimate warrant because they'll see it's a warrant. They don't know if there's a complaint on file. Right. They don't know if the statute of limitations is It run. just pops up on their screen. Exactly. And so, and by the time it gets to warrant, they have warrant fees. They have probably a failure to appear and it could be up to thousand, dollars $1,500, $2,000 worth of fines. And right. so they they go to jail and then usually those people they either have to bond out or they have, they're laying them out at $100 a day, which is a cost to us because if they're laying them out, that's, you know, the $60 a day for us that we're paying them. Right. That we're, yeah, that it's cost the county. 770-5790-1800-687-0790. We're vis- visiting with uh, Justice of the Peace Precinct 2, Susan Rowley. It has, has your office, have you, has anyone done like a an estimated cost of how much money is lost here in this backlog how much money that could have gone to the you know the the county that is going to be lost basically realistically of just the tickets i'm gonna say even i was gonna say 15 but i'm gonna even go even be more conservative about my number and say let's say we have to dismiss 13,500 or 14,000 which is really very realistic if you think anywhere from 250 to 300 per ticket we're looking at three to four million dollars that could have been brought in revenue but 
now we're not going to be able to get. And I hate that. I mean, that just drives me nuts thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, so what, what's the process now moving forward for your office? What are you, what are y'all doing about all of this? I'm going through this 500, six, no, probably 800 page spreadsheet. And I'm going through and making sure just a few of them that just should be taken off the system that are on there. And there's not that many, um, that we take those off. And then they take the issued and some bad checks out of there because that they always file complaints on theirs. And then the rest of them, I'm going to take the whole spreadsheet over to the DA's office and they're going to decide, well, except for, I'm going to keep 17, 2017 on and maybe some exceptional cases in 2016 that have complaints. And then we're going to take them to the DA's office. They're going to sort it out and we'll do a blanket dismissal and they'll keep, they go through and if there's ones where they have, say, a criminal case upstairs in their office and they want to keep the one downstairs and it's legitimate, then they'll say, here's the list of the ones we want to keep and then we'll have all these dismissed. But then I have to box them up. We're, with the former administration, we have a, I mean, a basement filled, not only upstairs, but a basement filled with files, just stacked. Right. I mean, not in any order whatsoever. And that's another task I have to get into, but I, I have to archive them a certain way and, and, um, cause they were never archived and there were never reports made in the end, no auditor's reports. So it's just. A Sounds like a mess. mess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank absolutely. you. Uh, so it's going to, it's going to take a little bit of time, but you know, the, uh, I, you're working with the DA's I office. I promise. I promise I will get this done. Yeah. Susan Rowley, Justice of the Peace Precinct 2. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Chad. Thanks for stopping by. We'll let you get to work now. Okay. You got a lot of paperwork. Yeah, I do. I do. Susan Rowley, Justice of the Peace Precinct 2.